In this lesson, I want to teach you how to use trigonometry to solve problems in both two and three dimensions. Let me start by reviewing the tools that you're able to use to solve for sides and angles in a triangle. The primary trig ratios are used to find sides and angles in a triangle that contains a right angle. And the three primary trig ratios are sine, cosine, and tangent of a reference angle. Sine of a reference angle is equal to its opposite side divided by hypotenuse. Cosine of the angle is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. And tan of the reference angle equals opposite over adjacent. And you're probably familiar with the acronym SOKATOA that can be used to help you remember those three primary ratios. But if you have a triangle that does not have a right angle, which we call an oblique triangle, SOKATOA doesn't work. You have to use the sine law and the cosine law to solve for any missing sides or angles. Let me start by writing down what the sine law is. The sine law states that the ratio of any side divided by the sine of its opposite angle is equal. And we use this law under two different conditions. The first condition is if we know two sides and one angle opposite from one of the given sides. So for example, if you knew side B and side A, and also angle A, right, the angle opposite from side A, you could use sine law to solve for angle B. And the other condition says if you know two angles and any side. So for example, if we knew angle A, angle C, and side A, we could use sine law to solve for side C. And then the other law, cosine law, which has two formats. The first format would look like this. This format of cosine law is used when you know two sides and the angle contained by those two sides. So for example, if we knew side B and side C, and also the angle contained by those two sides, so angle A, we could use cosine law to solve for the other side, side A. And if we were to rearrange this formula to isolate cosine of the angle, we would have a new version of cosine law that can be used to solve for an angle if we know all three sides of the triangle. And now let's do a few examples where we use these tools to solve for missing sides and angles in triangles. We'll start with problems in just two dimensions. Example one says Jonathan needs a new rope for his flagpole, but is unsure of the length required. He measures a distance of 10 meters away from the base of the pole. And from this point, the angle of elevation to the top of the pole is 42 degrees. What is the height of the pole to the nearest tenth of a meter? So I see the question is asking us to solve for the height of the flagpole, and the information given in the question tells us that this distance from the base of the pole is 10 meters, and from that point, the angle of elevation, so the angle above a horizontal, is 42 degrees. Assuming that the flagpole is perpendicular to the ground, because I have a right angle triangle, I could use SOKATOA, the primary trig ratios, to solve for the missing side. If this is my reference angle here, 42 degrees, from that reference angle, I'll label opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Opposite from the reference angle is the height of the pole. Adjacent to the reference angle is the side length of 10 meters. And the hypotenuse is always across from the right angle. Because I'm trying to find the opposite side, and I know the adjacent side, from SOKATOA, I would want the ratio that involves both opposite and adjacent, which is tan. So I could say that tan of the reference angle, 42 degrees, is equal to the opposite side, which is the height of the pole, divided by the adjacent side, which is 10. And then I can isolate the height by multiplying the 10 to the other side. And then using your calculator, you could get an approximate value. Rounded to the nearest tenth of a meter, it's about 9.0 meters tall. On to question two. Pam, Stephen, and Rachel are standing on a soccer field. Stephen and Rachel are 23 meters apart, and I see that side labeled. From Stephen's point of view, the other two are separated by 72 degrees, which is labeled. And from Pam's point of view, the other two are separated by 55 degrees. Determine the distance from Pam all the way to Rachel. So because that's across from angle S, I would label this side side S. First of all, notice that this is an oblique triangle. There is no 90 degree angle. So we won't be able to use the primary trig ratios. You'll need either sine law or cosine law. And because we're given two angles and one side, that's when we use sine law. And sine law states that any side divided by the sine of its opposite angle is going to be equal. So S over sine 72 would be equal to 23 
divided by sine of its opposite angle, 55. And now we have an equation with only one unknown. We can isolate that unknown by multiplying this sine 72 to the other side of the equation. And then using a calculator to get an approximate value for that expression, we would determine that the distance between Pam and Rachel is about 26.7 meters. On to example three. A drive belt wraps around three pulleys as shown. Find the perimeter of the drive belt to the nearest tenth of a centimeter. If I want the perimeter, I know that's going to be the sum of the three sides of this triangle, but we're missing this side here. Also notice that this is not a right angle triangle that we know of, so we can't use Sokotoa. We'll have to choose whether to use sine law or cosine law. Because we know two sides and the angle contained by those two sides, that's when we use cosine law. I'll label this unknown side x, and cosine law would tell me that that side squared would be equal to the sum of the squares of the two known sides minus two times the product of those known sides times cosine of the contained angle. And then I can use my calculator to get an approximate value for the right side of this equation. And since this is what x squared is equal to, we can figure out what x is equal to by square rooting that value. And that's about 9.3 centimeters which means the perimeter of this triangle would be the sum of the three sides of this triangle, 14 and a half, 16, and 9.3, which means the perimeter is about 39.8 centimeters. Moving on to example number four. This is our last question that's in two dimensions. It says to find the measure of angle G. We don't know if we have a right triangle here, so we can't use Sokotoa but we do know all three sides of this triangle. When you know all three sides of the triangle, you can use cosine law, the rearranged version, to be able to solve for any angle we want. So if I want angle G, my formula would start with cosine of G equals, and then in the numerator, I have to start with the side opposite from the angle I'm finding. So I have to start with 4.8. So it would be 4.8 squared, minus the squares of the other two sides. The order of the other two does not matter. And then I divide by negative two times these second two sides, which are the ones adjacent to the angle we're finding. And then we could simplify both the numerator and denominator of this fraction. And when we know the ratio and want the angle, we use the inverse cosine function to solve for that angle. And using a calculator, we could figure out that that's approximately 49.1 degrees. Now let's move on to some problems in three dimensions that we'll have to use these trigonometry tools for. Example four says a vertical flagpole TP, so this right here from T to P is a flagpole, stands in the corner of a rectangular field. QRST forms that field. So this QRST, this blue rectangle, think of that as the ground, and this pole is coming straight up out of the ground. And we'll assume that that pole forms 90 degree angles with the ground in both directions here. This question then wants us to find the height of the flagpole, which is this side here, side TP. I'll call that X. And it also wants us to find the angle of elevation of P from S. That would be the angle between this line that goes between S and P and a horizontal line, which is the ground. And I'll call that angle theta. So starting with part A, let's find the height of the flagpole, which we called x. Now, if I look at this triangle here, first of all, I know there's a right angle here because this side is the ground and this side is the pole that's coming straight up from the ground. Because it's a 3D drawing on a 2D screen, it doesn't look like a 90 degree angle. So I'll redraw it off to the side so that's more obvious. And also notice that the bottom side of that triangle is equal to this side of the rectangle, which would be 30 meters and angle Q is 34 degrees. Because I have a 90 degree angle in this triangle, I can choose a primary trig ratio to solve for this unknown side that we want that we call side X. From the reference angle, the side we're looking for is opposite from the reference angle, and the side we know is adjacent to the reference angle. From Sokotoa, the ratio that involves opposite and adjacent is tan. So I know that tan of the 34 degree reference angle will be equal to the opposite side, which we call x, divided by the adjacent side, which is 30 meters. I can isolate that x by multiplying both sides by 30, and then using a calculator, I can get an approximate value for the height of that flagpole to be 20.2 meters. 
And then moving on to part B of this question, we need to find the angle of elevation of P from S. So we need this angle right here, which notice is inside of this right triangle, which I'll also redraw. This side of the triangle corresponds to the height of the flagpole, which we solved in part A, 20.2. Because I have a right angle, I can use the inverse of a primary trig ratio to solve for an angle if I know two of the sides of the right triangle, which I do. From this reference angle, I know the opposite side and the adjacent side. The ratio that involves opposite and adjacent is again tan. So I know that tan of that reference angle would equal the opposite side, 20.2, divided by the adjacent side, 15. And when we know the ratio and want to solve for the angle, we can get that angle by doing inverse tan of the ratio. And then using a calculator, we would get an approximate value for that of 53.4 degrees. All right, two more examples left. Example five says from point B, Manny estimates the angle of elevation to the top of the cliff is 38 degrees. From point D, which is 68.5 meters away from Manny, Joe estimates that the angle between the base of the cliff, himself, and Manny to be 42 degrees, while Manny estimates that the angle between the base of the cliff, himself, and Joe is 63 degrees. What is the height of the cliff to the nearest tenth of a meter? So we're looking for the height of the cliff, which is represented with this side length. I notice that that side length I want is part of this right angle triangle. Let me start by redrawing that right angle triangle. So in this triangle, I notice there is a right angle which means I can use a primary trig ratio to solve for a side length if I know one of the acute angles and any other side of this right triangle. But I don't know the length of either of the other two sides, so I'm not able to find the height of the cliff yet. But this side length here, which corresponds to this one in the diagram, notice that side length is shared by this triangle. So let me redraw that triangle and see if there's a way for me to find that shared side. Now in this triangle, I have two angles, which means I really have all three angles because I know the angles in a triangle add to 180. That would mean that angle C is 75 degrees. And this side right here, side BC, is the one that's shared by both triangles. Right here it is in the red triangle as well. I'll label that side, side X. In this oblique triangle, because I know two angles and one side, I can use sine law to find another side. Sine law tells me that if I do any side length divided by sine of its opposite angle, it'll be equal for any pair of sides and angles. So that would mean that x divided by sine 42 would be equal to 68.5 divided by sine of its opposite angle, 75 degrees. And then we could isolate the variable x by multiplying both sides of the equation by sine of 42 degrees. And then using a calculator to get an approximate value, we would find out that the side length x is about 47.45. And now that we know this side length here, notice that it is part of this red right triangle that has the height of the cliff that we're trying to find. So I'll redraw that triangle below. And since this triangle has a right angle, we can use SOHCAHTOA to be able to solve for a side length. From our known reference angle, the height of the cliff is the opposite side. And this 47.45 is the side adjacent to the known angle. The ratio that involves opposite and adjacent is tan. So I could say that tan of the 38 degree reference angle is equal to the opposite side h divided by the adjacent side 47.45. And then we could isolate h by multiplying both sides by 47.45. And using a calculator, we can get an approximate value for the height of the cliff to be about 37.1 meters. And now moving on to example six. It says that Emma is up on a 50 meter high bridge. So that side's 50 meters. And she sees two boats anchored below, boat A and boat B. From her position, boat A has a bearing of 230 degrees. So that means clockwise from north, it's 230 degrees to where boat A is. And boat B has a bearing of 120 degrees. Emma estimate the angles of depression to be 38 degrees for boat A, and 35 degrees for boat B. How far apart are the boats to the nearest meter? So we're looking for our final thing that we want is this side right here, 
side Q of this triangle. So let me start by drawing that triangle and see what we know. Since I know it's 120 to boat B and 230 to boat A, angle Q is going to be the difference between 230 and 120, which is 110 degrees. But that's the only thing I know about that triangle. But notice that this side of this triangle, which corresponds to this side on the diagram, is shared with this right triangle. And this side, which corresponds to this side in the diagram, is shared with this right triangle. So I can use those two right triangles to find these two shared sides. And then I'd be able to use cosine law to solve for that side. So let's start by looking at this right triangle. I'll redraw it off to the side. The question tells me that the angle of depression down to boat A is 38 degrees. So that means if I were to draw an invisible horizontal line, the angle below that horizontal line is 38 degrees. And then if you know your parallel line theorems, we have the Z pattern here, which would tell me that angle A is also 38 degrees. And then since we have a right triangle, we can use Sokotoa to solve for a missing side. I want this bottom side here, AQ, because it's shared with AQ in that blue triangle. I'll call this side X. Notice that that is the adjacent side to the known angle, and 50 is the opposite side. So once again, we'll be using the tan ratio to solve for X. Tan of 38 will be equal to the opposite side, 50, over the adjacent side, X. And then I could isolate this X by multiplying it to the left and then dividing this tan 38 to the right. The X and the tan 38 will just switch spots with each other. And then using a calculator, we'll get that is about 64 meters. And then we could follow the exact same process using this right triangle to solve for this side, which is shared with the blue triangle. I'll show you that quickly. Okay, now that I have these two side lengths, side X and side Y, which correspond to these two sides of the blue triangle, let me actually make a bit of room here. Because this triangle has no right angle, it's an oblique triangle. I can't use Sokotoa, but I do know two sides and the angle contained by those two sides, so I could use cosine law to solve for side Q, where that would look like this. Q squared equals the sum of the squares of the two known sides, minus two times the product of those sides, times cosine of the angle contained by the two sides. And when evaluating this, that's what Q squared is equal to. To get Q, we would have to square root it. And when we do that, Q would be about 111 meters which means the boats are about 111 meters apart. That's it for this lesson on trig in two and three dimensions. Stay tuned for the next lesson where we look at the ambiguous case of sine. Jensen, man.